I'm gonna try to do like a speed round of Q and A's because I have the energy right now and if I don't do it right now, I don't know when I'm gonna do it. I was actually like in the middle of getting ready to go out and then it popped into my mind that these questions have been sitting for a while and it's not like I feel pressured to get them done like right away, but I just know that if I don't do them while I remember them and have the energy, I don't know when I'm going to do them. So let me pull up the community page and see what we're working with. Don't start, don't start. Okay, community. And I'm doing this all one take. I'm not going to edit anything. I have hot, I have water boiling and I'm going to have to go make a coffee, decaf, um, while doing this. I don't have to. I want to. So I'm going to. Um, here it is. Oh, okay. It's 52 questions. Oh, and some of the questions are multiple. Qu okay. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Let's see what I can do. Uh, hey, man, how's it going? I do have a couple of questions. Number one. What do you consider to be the number one stressor in life right now? Money. <laughs> number two, what type of activities do you do when it is me time? I love a good bath, um, meditating. Uh, well, actually, no, it's more like depersonalization, like derealization. I've been zoning out a lot, but it's like, I check out lately a lot and it's nice. It feels kind of nice, um, but it's not good. It's not a good sign. Um, but I love walking. I do love meditating. Um, wow, doing a speed round Q&A for like a rambler, for me? Huh. Uh, but yeah, I love baths and I love, um, I love being with nature. I love just like hyper focusing on like a leaf or a flower or a flame. That's my type, that's meditation to me. It's a form of meditation. And I love making music. And I love working. Like, that's that's a good time for me. Um, any anticipated career changes in the future? Interesting question. Um, anticipated, yeah. There's talk of... There's talk of... I don't know if I should talk about what there's talk of. Ah, uh, not yet. Next question. Oh my God, sis, your hair is looking stunning. Thank you. My question is, what's your advice to other people out there who's struggling and being stuck in their problems, such as regrets and overthinking? Yeah. Yeah, my advice? Hmm. Oh, I don't have a question, but this question sounds good to me. Excited to be able to hear that. Wow. Yeah, it's a good question. What's your advice to other people out there who are struggling and being stuck in their problems, like regrets and overthinking? Um, find something to do. Make a project for yourself. Set a goal. The only way for me to escape my thoughts is to busy myself. But it has to be something rewarding because ADHD. So, um yeah think of something that you love and then try to make a goal or a project around that that is realistic that you can actually accomplish and then just focus on that or just do something you love like you know go out in nature go for a walk or watch a good show that never works for me though my mind is very obnoxiously invasive sometimes um I wish I had a good answer for you. I'm still figuring that one out. But the most um, the most effective thing for me so far has just to be, to be um, set goals and to focus on other things as best I can. Just kind of occupy my mind with other things. Force myself to hang out with friends. Force, my, force myself to socialize. Um, sometimes that doesn't work either. I'll be with a whole bunch of people or... A few people I'll be with people and I'll still 
not be able to be there because my mind is minding. Uh, how do you deal with life in general <laughs> from your lowest lows to your highest highs and everything in between? And lastly, what would your advice be to people who feel they have been forsaken and have tried everything imaginable to feel better with no success? Wow, thanks and have a great one. How do I deal with life in general? I don't know. Am I? Again, it's goals. I, I know kind of what I want to do. Um, I've always kind of known, but it's, it's kind of morphed into other things. But I know that I want to be of service. I know that I want to help heal others and myself. The human experience is very interesting to me. Where am I going with this? How do I deal with life in general? I stay curious. Yeah. So that's that's what it is. At the end of the day, it's curiosity that has always driven me. I want to understand how people are happy and how people are are mentally well. Like what what like what is that like? <laughs> um, not to say that I'm not ever happy, but. It's just, the human experience is so unique to all of us and, and that's interesting to me. I want to know what it's like to be you and you and you and there are so many similarities and so many differences and at the same time, like, we are one, we're all connected. There's just so much curiosity in that. And then also, like, the world and nature and just how and what and why, like, yeah curiosity and then just wanting to be a, a give leave offer something to this world um as opposed to just sucking it dry i don't think i i was gonna say i don't think i alone could suck the world dry but i wish that i just didn't end up there with that sentence um lastly what would your advice be to people who feel they've been forsaken? Just don't go back there. I know that feeling. I've felt that. I still feel that sometimes. So I try my best to just stay present. I did spend a lot of time trying to rationalize. You could do that if it helps you. I think it did to a point for me. And, and then they said, and you've tried everything imaginable to feel better with no success. It's, yeah, I know that feeling and it's just, it's a, it's a personal journey. You'll have to find what works for you. But if you believe you can, there, you will. There, there is a way for you. I wholeheartedly believe that. Do you experience self-hate? Yes. How did you overcome your insecurities, like physical appearance? I don't know, I haven't. I have not. I have not. I I was looking in the mirror last night before going to bed and I was really struggling to connect to who I was seeing. Like I was like, that's me. I'm looking into this person's eyes and like they're they feel foreign to me. I got some dysmorphia, I got some yeah, it's no, I haven't overcome my physical and my insecurities about my physical appearance, but um, I've stopped putting much weight on it mattering. It's what's inside that counts, and it's true. Um, easy for me to say because I do understand that, uh, I am appealing visually for some, but I don't see it. Um, sometimes I see it. This is hectic. Um, I'm gonna move on. God is taking questions. Thank you. Let me get back into that energy. Let me, let me come back. God is taking questions. Have you ever traveled outside of your state? Yes. How long have we been doing photography? We. Oui. Um, I've loved taking pictures for as long as I was able to take pictures from like my first camera phone. I remember being on set actually for like, a, I don't know, some something. Um, something, some production that was being filmed, and I was young, 
it's all blurry. I don't remember the show or anything, but I remember it was like a break and I was somewhere in a garden and I was just zoomed in on like blades of grass and the dirt and the like little, this like this whole ecosystem and this little tiny piece of earth. And um, that's like, yeah, that really, that does something for me. And it's always kind of been my, my vibe is to just get really close and see things from different perspectives. It makes me feel small in a good way. But also, um, because I think I've dissociated for a long time and seeing things through my eyes but then through the camera brings reality closer to me somehow but then it's also surreal surrealism is I think it's my thing someone had said that it's becoming my my style or my brand or something like that I love that I I agree I see it and I look I just I yeah I love that what makes me 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 I do I don't know how has your musical journey been going it hasn't, my foot's falling asleep. It hasn't, I haven't made music in a, a while. <laughs> Have I? I think maybe I, I made like an instrumental not long ago, but yeah, it's, it's on pause, I think. I've gone through some things over the past little while and usually it takes a minute to process. Some of those things I thought I had closure and then the wounds were reopened so it always seems to take a little while before I can write. Um, it's not that I have to process it first because the music, the writing is part of the processing. It's actually like time down the line after making something that I'll listen back and I'm like, oh, okay, right, I get it. Um, but Let's let's twist let's turn it around. How's my musical journey been going? It's it's still I'm still on the journey, I guess. And it's it's good and it's bad. And it's good and it's bad and what is good and what is bad? It's I'm on it. What's the most precious moment you have lived? I can't do that. I can't answer that in a speed round. <laughs> I don't, I, mm, precious moment, the most precious moment. I don't know. I don't know. I've had quite a few. It's not that I can't think of any, it's that I can think of too many. That's pretty cool. Um, one advice, the most important piece of wisdom you'd like to share. This is, you, these two questions. Maybe I'll, I'll round back when I have time. Um, you asked for chit chat and people asked you things like, what's the meaning of life? <laughs> I know. Um, chit chat, please. Uh, your dog is fantastic. Yeah, he is. He's the best. Um, the cat who shares his life with me too. He, not it. Huh? Mm. And I understand each other. Oh, he and I understand each other. Totally. He said he, not it, and I understand each other totally. Now I understand totally. I write this because I'm very angry. I read your comments about your experiences, not chit chat. You're a wonderful person who shares her soul. I love your posts because you speak about the beauty and the harsh of life. You talk to your pains because you love life. You are real. Your voice for sight to go and other voices helped me a lot in harsh times. Not the nice voice of a woman, but the kindly voice I need. You are a beautiful woman person. <laughs> Chit chat. In Italy, it's 11 p.m. In my bed, I'm reading In Patagonia, Bruce Chatwin, A Journey in Patagonia, and In Chatwin's Soul. Love and respect, Amanda. Life is a journey. That was like beautiful and for some reason I'm emotional okay we're okay for time 
I want to go make my coffee. But how will you be entertained? I guess I could just like cut the break out. I could do that much editing. I don't want to do any editing. I've done so much editing this month. Um, okay, let's just, okay. Kind of general, but how do you make yourself feel better, motivated when everything has been wrong for years and nothing seems to work? <laughs> Asking for a friend. I think a lot of us feel this way. And we're all doing the same thing. We just keep going. We just keep going. How do I make myself be feel better? I'm always open to and always looking for beauty because it is always there. There's always something just like breathtaking in your vicinity. I swear, I swear it's true. Your hand. Look at your fingerprint. Look at the pattern of your fingerprint. Look at that Fibonacci <laughs> spiral sequence. Is that what it is on your finger? Frick. Let me just double check. Fingerprint Fibonacci. The fingerprint of God are all around us. Yeah, we see a fingerprint and it too has traces of the Fibonacci spiral in it. We all have a unique fingerprint, the arcs, da, 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 but I think we all have the spiral. Anyways, if you don't, there, there's surely something else incredible. Stop and pay attention to your breathing, that's a trip. The things that our body is doing without us thinking, that's wild. Um, those things are beautiful to me. So, um, yeah, I just, I stay open to the fact that that is true, that there is always, there is always beauty to be found. Even when I'm absolutely miserable and devastated and destroyed and cannot move, there's still something. Um, that hasn't always been enough to even keep me alive, but for the most part, it definitely has. I hope that helps, but I, I know that sometimes it really just feels like nothing can. So just be patient. Because it can get better. At the very least, just believe that. Just try to believe that. I know even that's really hard sometimes. Yeah. How would you describe yourself, and are there goals that you're working on right now? I would describe myself as chaos. Chaos. <laughs> Chaos. Um, are there goals that you're working on right now? Yeah, I'm working on making it through fall and winter. Um, paying my rent. Staying, like, relatively sound of mind. Um, but just, yeah. My goal for now is to just not let depression win. This time of year, seasonal affective or seasonal adjustive disorder mixed with all of my other things um it's just really hard i'm learning english and i really love your voice how can i imitate your voice don't you have your own you have your own voice and i'm sure that it's amazing it's yours work with what you have uh I cannot do impersonations. I can do accents, but I can't copy other people's voices. Um, some people can, and I think it's really cool, but, and if you can, I mean, you could try to imitate, intimate. Oh, it actually says, how can I intimate your voice? But I think you mean imitate. Um, don't. If you mean accent, though, um, Well, I had a Jamaican accent growing up, and I was made fun of. I wish I still had it. It comes back a little bit when I'm around Jamaicans or in Jamaica, but that's been a long time. Or when I talk about Jamaica. But um, I studied Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So if you want to imitate me, 
first learn a Jamaican accent while you're learning English. Learn English with a Jamaican accent, then study Buffy, and then spend some time in Canada. <laughs> um, what inspires you most in your day-to-day? -day? Again, it's just the curiosity, dreaming, daydreaming, nature, Peter. Question. Question number one. Have you ever tried to do a cooking show with your voice? Um, mm, yeah, sort of. For this, um, this, like, elementary school class, it was gonna be, like, something they brought in. Or, no, they were just gonna put it on on YouTube for the kids. And it was about, um, making easy nutritional meals with what you got. Um, there's definitely been times in my life where I really didn't have much, but I could still make something delicious with nothing. It was like, I considered myself a bit of an alchemist in the kitchen. Like, I really, I made someone a chocolate birthday cake out of, I don't even know. Like, it was like, co like hot chocolate mix, and it'll sound disgusting if I tell you, if I tell you what it was made of. I don't even remember fully, but it was good, though. Um, although everything is good when you're starving. Um, but yeah, so I was, um, I was good at that. I was good at doing the little show, but the editing was too much. So much work. Do I like vodka? I don't drink. I have not had a sip of alcohol in like two years. And prior to that, it was still quite rare. But prior to that... Wine was my drink of choice. But I, oh yeah, no, I, I, I could do a martini though. Dirty as heck though. Like, some of you are gonna hate, like, judge me so hard. You might even, like, click off of this video. I want, like, half the jar of olive juice in my martini. Wanted. If I still drank those things. Um, yeah. Sometimes I do pickle juice too, it's not the worst. What is your overall thoughts about marriage? It, as a sanctity, is obviously experiencing a poisoning in this smartphone generation. Do you still believe? I was never really about marriage, to be honest. I believe, well, from what I understood about marriage as a younger person, I thought that it was kind of just like proving something. And I was like, you shouldn't have to prove anything. Now I understand that it's more of a business agreement. And I think <laughs> that really that's what marriage should be treated as. You find a partner that you can, you can work with for the rest of your life. You guys are going to be the, the best team. You found your, your partner, your business partner. So you sign the contract. And you, you get it together. Um... But if it's about, if it's just a love thing, I, f I don't know that, well, frick. So mainly that, the business thing. And then um, if you also have love, then then that's, that is, you are so blessed. I guess that's the goal, right? What are my thoughts? My thoughts are that I think a lot of us feel pressured and forced to do this like marriage thing and well I think a lot less of us actually like we're not really feeling as pressured I guess I can speak for myself to have kids and get married and <laughs> have a house <laughs> um <laughs> as, yeah sure um yeah, I'm getting I'm getting lost here do I still VO for psych to go yeah, yeah, I think. Um, I'm getting a lot less scripts, a lot less. Um, and they have other other um, talent now as well. But I'm I'm pretty sure that I'll still I'll still get a few scripts. It's a weird. That's a weird. Yeah, I don't know. I do, VO for sight to go. Things have definitely changed a little bit, though. 
What's the first thing you do when you're sad? Um, be sad. Feel sad. The first thing I do when I'm sad is feel it. The f yeah. Yeah. You have to feel your feelings. It's not comfortable. It kind of sucks. But, um, that's the only way. You gotta go through. I love and miss your Q and A's. It's been a while. I know it has. I know. Love ya, you're amazing. Love ya, you're amazing. We'll psych to go teach about spiritual problems sometimes. I don't know. Um, psych to go is not my channel. This is my channel. Um, yeah. Where am I? Did I? Huh? Yeah, yeah. So it's not my channel. This is my channel. What? would be your dream job or are you enjoying yourself right now doing videos for Psych to go um my dream job is just more of what i'm doing like a lot more it's very it's slow right now um yeah i just want to do more um i miss modeling and not in like the that sounds a type of way but i really liked being able to basically get into a character and connect with my surroundings and the people that I'm working with, but not have to speak. My communication can just purely be through my eyes. There was something really healing for me about that. Um, so I would, like, I would like to do that again. I, um, I was really excited to join this agency actually. Um, and we had a really amazing test shoot. I was like positive that they were gonna take me on. And then like a week went by and I was like, well, if they were excited about me, they would have hit me up by now. And then finally I was like, oh, I'm just gonna reach out. So I did and no, they didn't want me, but that's okay. Can we get another random ramble? This, this, this is that I think, but yeah. I actually have, um, maybe it'll already be out by the time this comes out. Or maybe I'll make this and just set it free tonight. And then tomorrow, tomorrow is um, a really special project. My other foot is asleep now. But I'm too low if I sit on the chair like a normal person. I spent like a week and a bit working on um, kind of like a documentary style vlog. Um, I started recording while I was quite deep into, um, a depressive episode, um, wrought with despair. It was kind of triggered by the, um, rejection actually, but it wasn't just that. It was like a bunch of things that kind of piled up and that was just the final string for me to be like, nobody, am I ever going to work again? How am I going to survive? And, um... With Indeed, the um, work platform, I'm using Indeed often to apply for work. A lot of people email back to say that they don't, they're not gonna take you. So it's just like I've been getting a lot of rejection emails, um, among other things. It's just, I was just, yeah, I was feeling sorry for myself, and I, I was seeing all of the symptoms. Like I couldn't. There were times where I, there were days that I didn't get out of bed. There was like food wrappers and like half eaten food on the ground, dishes piled up. Don't know when, like I went like days without bathing. It was not good. Um, I didn't document that because I didn't really have the wherewithal to think about doing that. That would kind of be weird if I did, but um, what I did document was starting at the day that I decided I was going to start cleaning and get my, my act together um, and I did I was really I was doing well as I recorded the video and then and then something else came to kind of knock me down but I didn't I didn't let it knock me down all the way it freaked me out and stressed me out but I kept it moving and I, I got I got the job done so 
yeah, I'm proud of myself. And then I edited the whole half hour video and brought it to life and I'm proud of myself. Uh, that was, yeah, random ramble. So that's kind of like a random ramble, but yeah, no, it is. It definitely, yeah, so soon. <laughs> we, all have up and, we all have ups and downs. How do you manage when self-sabotage wants to come in and set you back a notch? And then someone replied, next favorite question. <laughs> um, and turning off notifications. I think, yeah, if you were getting notifications, there were a lot for this one. <sighs> self-sabotage. Mm. How do I manage? Well, okay. I think I'm at a place where I know that a lot of these like intrusive thoughts and these like mean thoughts that happen, I know that they're just not true. Even though they feel all the way true, they feel like facts. I think that I just lately have been trying my best to um, just repeat in my head, like, this isn't true. This is not true. I'm not well right now. Something has set me off. Something has upset me. Something has triggered a wound within me that maybe I need to, I need to go reflect on and, and help heal. But right now, these thoughts are not me. I'm not feeling well. When I'm well, I don't think these things. So, um... Yeah, I don't know if that makes sense or if that would work for you, but really it's like telling myself that I'm wrong, that my thoughts are wrong, that my feelings are valid, but they're based on um, misconstrued, inf misconstrued information. Yeah. Yeah. How do I deal with peer pressure? Mm. I don't really get, I don't really, I don't really experience that one. I don't, I don't, yeah. I've gotten really good at just minding my business and accepting that I'm on my own path and my own journey and so is everyone else. Um, and I know for a fact that what works for you and you and them, it doesn't work for me. I've tried it and it doesn't work. The only thing that works for me is what works for me. I mean, some things that work for others works for me, but you know what I'm saying? I, um, next. Did you go to college or university? If so, what did you study? No, I didn't. I went to the school. I'm still in the school of life. Um, I've taken some, some courses, and I've had some pretty like wild, hands-on experience like in so many, like in a broad spectrum of things. So, um, but to answer your question, no, no. Toki, I call Toki my brother cat. He is two years old, a male gray cat. He calls me something like Mew. <laughs> they wrote like Mew and I, it's cute, but I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to do it. I did it. <laughs> Frick. Okay. Do I like Asian food? Yeah, I do. I don't have a favorite though. I don't have a favorite anything. If you know me, if you've been here for a while, you know that. Um, but like the the chili crisp, like the it's not spicy, but like the chili crisp and the oil, I put that on everything. Ugh, there's a dog hair in my mouth. Yeah. I put that on everything. Um, always have. Um but yeah, I also like where I live, it's like, mm, like 98% um, Southeast Asian, East Indian. Um, so like all of the food is, is from there, like everywhere, all around here. And that's good, that's good stuff. Um, but I haven't had an Asian food from anywhere in Asia that I didn't like ever 
Do you have plans to visit my country, the Philippines, for vacation? I don't have plans to visit anywhere right now. I have hopes and dreams of visiting everywhere, but currently no plans to visit anywhere because it's just, it's not realistic at the moment. But I love Filipino people. I grew up with um, some, like a set of brothers, Filipino brothers, and we got into a lot of trouble together as like a whole crew of troublemaking children. Um, but we spent a lot of time at their house with their family, like karaoke at night, the spaghetti, the sweet spaghetti, like so much food, the oxtail the in the peanut butter sauce, like Jamaicans do oxtail, but y'all do oxtail with peanut butter sauce and I remember getting it all over my dress um that was a good night nonetheless party it was just it's like these wonderful parties with the whole family the the family then I don't I don't know if this is all Filipinos but also I made a lot of music with Filipino people um and it just seems like family is really important to you and that's um the experience of having like a, a so many family members that come together regularly and enjoy each other it was just so beautiful to be a part of and they were so warm and welcoming to anyone that set foot at their doorstep again i've never met a filipino person that i didn't love so i would love to go to the philippines uh yeah i want to go everywhere though is canada a nice place to go to vacation to mm, so expensive expensive here and it's gotten so much worse as of late it's crazy it is crazy um however probably better to vacation than try to live here uh that said bc in the summer in the spring gorgeous our mountains and our nature is just next level the air is delicious so yeah yeah come visit Come visit. It is beautiful. Um, but come here, come here after educating yourself how Canada came to be so that you can come and really respect. I think that we should always educate ourselves before we go somewhere that we are not from. My parents came here from Jamaica and I was born here. Um, we're here and it's our responsibility. It's more than our responsibility to, to take care of this place and to take care of the people who, who cared for it from the very beginning. Don't just go somewhere and take from it. Don't do that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, come through. What's your diet every day? I don't, it's a mess. Um, what do you choose to get out of the sadness if it catches you? Like, how do I escape the sadness? It's just time. I still don't know. All I know is that I have to feel it and then ride it out, see if it's trying to teach me something, show me something. It always is. I don't always figure it out, but I get out. How often do you go shopping? <laughs> I didn't, like not, I don't, unless I have to like groceries um, yeah I don't buy anything unless it's like necessary if you were to become an animal what would it be and why mm, I want to be a bird but I also want to be some kind of feline I want to be both I want to be able to fly but I want to be agile and like I saw these little adorable cats that are like incredible hunters in the desert or something somewhere they're so cute they're so stealthy and quick and like you would not expect them to be so fierce because they're so cute I just want to like I want to be like cute but if you look at me or touch me the wrong way you know <laughs> um white rice or brown rice what do you prefer I never actually really liked rice I think I think it was because there was so much rice in my world growing up rice and peas like it was good, but I just like, cause I wanted the meat and the gravy. The rice is cool, but like, now as an adult, I really, I really like rice. It's, <laughs> um, and it's so, um, diverse. You can do so much with it, but 
Obviously, white rice is, like, the, like, is it obvious? Maybe not for everyone. For me, white rice is just, like, it's better. Parboiled rice, great. Brown rice is just tricky for me to get right. I'm still figuring it out. Q&A. I love this. How many freckles are on your adorable face? I don't know. Two, lots. Lots and lots. Do you plan on going to the USA? Any state? Um, I, when I think of America, I don't think of Hawaii, but... But I've been to, like, Seattle, and I've been to L.A., and I've been to Florida. Um, I want to go to Hawaii. That's where I would like to go. Um, I just, it's like I want to taste it. It just looks so green and luscious. I want to breathe that air. The leaf blowers are here. Let's hurry. The I haven't gone and had my coffee in the pot. The water is probably cold now can't wait why are you so beautiful why are you so beautiful stop it mm, how's your merch store doing i took it down it's not doing well no one was buying anything and i don't blame you it was way too expensive the way that it was working it's it's drop shipping so my favorite tv channel i don't have one how are my auditions i love have i love my auditions even if i don't book anything i just enjoy doing them it gets me up it gets me moving i put my face on i I start dreaming and creating and stepping into new worlds and new characters. So in that sense, it's going well. Have I booked anything? No. <laughs> Am I dating at the moment? I'm not dating anyone, but I'm open to dating. Like I'm open to it. Yeah. Um, we know you work at Psych2Go. Do you have another job? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I did it. I'm almost done. Uh, so many other jobs. Um, I still, the strike, the writer's strike is done, but I think the actor's strike is still happening. It's still weird. It's still weird, weird in that world. Um, but I was and will continue making music for syncing for film and television. Um, I, I do voice stuff for a lot of things. So like for video games, um, like music tags uh, for like little YouTube commercials, for bigger commercials. I've done a lot of dog food commercials and gym commercials. I'm also the voice on a radio station. I'm like the announcer. So like you're listening to 103.3, da 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 da. Um, yeah, I'll take what I can get. Everything voice related, I'm happy to do, but I'm also now applying for anything, everything. Um, it's tough. How am I doing personally? Right here, right now, I'm well. Have I ever been bullied? Hell yeah. 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 I got bullied for how I looked, how I sounded growing up. I was just built different. I've been this height since I was like 12. Um, but I was also just like, I was, I was thick. Like I was just built thick as a kid. And I got made fun of for the size of my calves, the size of my butt, the curls in my hair. The curls in my hair was a big one. I got called Sideshow Bob. Um, people would stick things in my hair. People would pull my hair. People would just touch my hair. Um, one of my nicknames was Ghetto Booty in elementary school. Um, but also, I was just always a bit different and a bit of a dreamer. And a bit of a zoner outer and um and I had a Jamaican accent so I said things weird I was diff weird I was I was different there were a lot of things to pick on and then when um I graduated um around that time things started picking up for me musically and I was getting really cool gigs I was opening for like R&B like old school R&B legends like Brian McKnight and SWV and Tony 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 and Tony Tony Tone, Tony Tony Tony, um, and Jeremiah and like Bobby Valentino at like big venues. People had a lot to say about these things. They said that I sounded like a. One person, one person put me on this hate site, and they were like, "This is Amanda Silvera, Van City's favorite girl." I remember like word for word. 
I tried to act like I didn't care. I pretended like I never went to like read all the other comments, but they're like, this is Amanda Silvera, Van City's favorite girl. Something like everyone seems to love her, but I think she sounds like a lamb. And I think they meant because of my, my vibrato, so it made me really insecure about my vibrato. And then one time I was in the studio and the, the engineer was like, you really are like Snow White. You sound like Snow White. And I was like, Those things stuck in my head. I'm always like worried that I sound like Snow White or a, or a sheep. <laughs> um, yeah, there's always been something. Oh, and also just like being this color with these eyes and also being Jamaican and also being mixed. It's a lot of people trying to tell me what I am and what I amn't. Um, and like forcefully and angrily. <laughs> That's not been fun. But, uh, are you ready for October? It's October 5th and I'm ready. I'm here. Let's get it. How's everyday life? Every day is different. Pineapple pizza? Yes. What did you most learn from your near-death experience that you still apply to today? Sorry if that's too personal, but would love to know. I've had a few near-death experiences. The one that I think you're talking about is the drowning that one was tricky because I kind of, like, questioned if I should be here. Um, it was a weird, it was a weird one for me. But I had another near death with the ectopic pregnancy a few years ago. And with that one, for me, it felt like it was a chance to take care of my inner child when I survived. Um, I miscarried on New Year's Eve and I remember it. Um, emergency on the phone saying I needed to go to the hospital I had to call someone and I was so depressed and so unwell and so tired I was like I don't want to bother anyone on New Year's Eve if it kills me it kills me and I lay there in so much pain and I bled and then it was over and I didn't die and it was New Year's Eve the beginning of the new year the beginning of the rest of my life was how I saw that. And that was when I started my, um, my shadow work. Really, um, really getting to know that inner child. And I'm still, and probably forever will be getting to know her. Uh, last question. Am I late to this? Is this done? Maybe next time. No, you're not. I wish that you would ask a question. We did it. Now I'm going to go have my coffee and finish getting ready. I don't know how my makeup is doing. I'm hot. Oh, yeah, I'm shiny as heck. Anyways, I love you so much. I'm glad that I... I did it! I did it! It's done. Sorry, that was loud. It's done! Love you, bye.